Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So I have to put things in perspective here. We're caught between album bombs, and at the very end of the year, a big disruption from Ariana Grande means that nothing is guaranteed to scrape by with enough points and manage to steal a year-end list spot. But I am saying that if acts are using between weeks as an excuse to dump some bad music, I would not be that surprised, because we sure as hell do not have much in the way of quality here. In other words, it wasn't exactly fun. Well, okay, you know what? The top 10 is at least somewhat stable with some quality. By some miracle mood by 24K Golden featuring Ian Dior scraped out a second week at number one, which is still a weak hold of the position, but holds the power of consistency in all channels, especially radio. Then we got WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion at number two, which actually saw a stabilization on the radio to make up for a pretty rough sales week, given that its streaming is still pretty rock solid, especially on YouTube. Then we had Laugh Now, Cry Later by Drake featuring Lil Durk at number three. Better radio, worse but still solid streaming, and absolutely no sales to speak of. Then we have Blinding Lights by The Weeknd at number four, which has still not been dethroned at the top on radio, but along the way is still holding okay streaming and sales as well. When it does finally crash, it's gonna be a slower departure. Then we saw a boost for Savage Love by Josh685 and Jason Derulo at number five. I mean, outside of a not great sales week, I would chalk this up to being based basically stable on all channels, especially on the radio, which is even more of the case for I Hope by Gabby Barrett and Charlie Puth going up to number six on consistent, if slowing, traction. But really, it's more a factor of Dynamite by BTS falling back down to number seven. What did I tell you, folks? As the sales margin would drop back and narrow and the radio and streaming hasn't done enough to compensate, this song is gonna stall out. Still kept it above Rockstar by DaBaby featuring Roddy Rich at number eight, but again, Again, it's on its way out anyway, pretty slowly in all categories. No surprise there. Then we get a re entry into the top 10. Holy by Justin Bieber, featuring Chance the Rapper at number 9, and we can't chalk all this up to synergy with the new single this week that I'll be talking about later. I predicted this is going to be bad because it's got consistent strength across the board. Even if it sucks, it's going to get higher, and the most that we can hope for is that it gets caught up in between years. That's all I'm going to say there. And rounding out our top 10, we had Lemonade by Internet Money, Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Nav, which is an on-demand streaming model monster that has pretty much no sales and is only now making a slight run on the radio. Songs that are solely streaming, they are vulnerable to album bombs though, so we will have to see how this will go in the next couple weeks. There is nothing guaranteed. And on that note are losers and dropouts. And you know what, at least in the latter category, we got a couple wins with both If the World Was Ending by J.P. Sachs featuring Julia Michaels finally leaving, along with Cool Again by Kane Brown. Both songs were pretty bad, so I'm fine to see them go. Unfortunately, our losers are a bit more of a mixed bag, most predictably on our way out naturally. From 21 Savage and Metro Boomin, from their album bomb, we saw Mr. Right Now with Drake at 42, Running at 50, and Glock in My Lap at 82. From Travis Scott, we saw Franchise featuring Young Thug and M.I.A. lose even more traction at 39. We also saw the continued downward slide of Don't Stop by Megan Thee Stallion featuring Young Thug, that going down to 43, and I Called Mama by Tim McGraw going down to 91. It looks like it's just getting rolled out naturally, that last one. Natural Radio will do that. And as for the rest... Well, Ice Cream by Blackpink and Selena Gomez is still tanking at 84, but the last two are gains that are cut short. Undia by J Balvin, Dua Lipa, Bad Bunny and Taney is down to 83, and OK Not To Be OK by Marshmello and Demi Lovato lost all that recovery from last week back down to 80. And neither of them surprised me all that much, just gotta say it. Now, following on from last week, our returns and gains seem to be a continued reset towards some kind of equilibrium for a short time, 
or showing some continued traction, with the exception of the one big comeback for a whole lot of choppas by Seda Baby up to 35, which is courtesy of a big name remix with Nicki Minaj that actually wound up pretty good. But the rest of these are either continuing from a return or just working off the gains from last week. Shame that in the latter category, we've got Said Some by Moneybag Yo up to 23 off its own big remix, and Love You Like I Used To by Russell Dickerson at 41. And our returning gains don't look good here either. Put Your Records On by Rip Momney at 79, Good Time by Nico Moon at 74, Big Big Plans by Chris Lane at 68, Okay, that last one's just forgettable. I'd probably throw You Too Love by Neo and Jeremiah in there too, but still, the one promising gain I can note here is Better Together by Luke Combs up pretty big to 57. It's got real traction on Nashville radio, some well-timed seasonality. I can see this being a pretty decent hit, especially if Nashville carries it into the winter slowdown, so we'll have to see. It happened last year with a couple other Luke Combs singles. I wouldn't mind it happening with this. But this takes us to our new arrivals. Thankfully a little less chaotic here than the past couple of weeks, even if we've got more new songs and most of them aren't anything close to good. Starting with number 100, Champagne Night by Lady A. Okay, wait a minute. This isn't a new song by the blues soul singer Anita White who performed under this name for decades. Oh, see what I did there. Yeah, like with the chicks, I had no issue with the act formerly known as Lady Antebellum changing their name. But it got sleazy in a hurry when they picked a name from an established black performer and then tried to sue her for copyright over it. Way to make yourselves look that much worse. And that's before you get to this new song, which is the definition of a tired and not good retread, especially for this trio. And no, maybe it's not fair for me to compare everything they've ever done to Need You Now. But when you are a group that has built your reputation that's a fair bit closer to adult alternative than country and playing for a slightly classier crowd, why are you now going for the whole outback country drinking beer on a champagne night approach? It's not a look that any of them can really sell, especially with, once again, how much Charles Kelly's rougher tone is pushed back in the mix. And when you pair it with an increasingly leaden groove and a very twangy tone, especially for them, how does this even square with their previous party records that at least implied a little bit more downtown sophistication. Now that was the theme of one of their songs. So no, this is a definition of a non-starter single and one that reflects a trio that is perilously low on ideas. Uh, not a good sign. Number 97, Pardon by T.I. featuring the Lil Baby. This is gonna sound bad, but I'm kind of surprised that a new T.I. song charted off that new project, even with the Lil Baby feature. I mean, nothing against T.I., but it's been a while since he's been a hit maker on the Hot 100. And thus, I was curious where he was gonna wind up going with this, and it turns out we're up for a bit of another retread, because T.I. is now nakedly sampling himself with a hook that's got a cadence that is way closer to his guest star than a lot of the tones he used to use, especially against the blocky bass and the very shuffling percussion skitter. Now, by the time we get to a lot of his verses, T.I.'s unique southern swagger slides back on the forefront, and that is good, his flow gets more relaxed, and then it serves him as driving a hard reintroduction for everybody who doesn't remember everything he did back in the 2000s, which given the way he's been talking recently on social media, Media, it's more than you would expect. But as somebody who does know T.I. and likes a lot of his discography, this feels like it's a reminder for a different audience that might not include me, with a little baby feature to guarantee that younger attention, and thus doesn't quite hit as strongly as my favorites, especially from him. I mean, it's not a bad song by any means. In fact, I'd argue it's actually pretty decent, but it's hard not to hear the trend chasing when T.I. used to set this lane. That's all I'm saying. Number 93, Throat Baby Go Baby by BRS Cash. 
I'm trying to bust all on you. Seems like it's been a while since we've had the generic trap single debuting every other week, but this feels very much like a return to that approach pretty much across the board, just with the reference points updated for late 2020. From a Rod Wave influence, we get the piano backdrop and some of the vocal melodies and the highly questionable mixing, this time with the percussion that just dominates the mix. And then we have our MC, who wants to showcase his rampant horniness by talking about all the girls who are giving him head in rather explicit detail. I mean, I brought this up before, how way too many guys would take all the wrong lessons from the success of WAP and think that it's an excuse for them to get horny as hell in so much songs. But the lessons that they aren't learning is the creativity and the hilarity and the delivery, which is why BRS defaults to ending his second verse moaning and it's nowhere near as compelling or funny as he thinks it is. I mean, I'll admit this guy doesn't sound like as much of a dick as many of his peers. He actually sounds like he likes the women who are blowing him, but otherwise... Uh, I gotta say it, there's just not enough here that impresses me or sticks out. So, uh, let's go elsewhere. Number 85, Happy Does by Kenny Chesney. Yeah, happy is as happy does. I'm actually quite surprised it took this long for a new Kenny Chesney song to chart, especially when it comes to relaxing beach country that's such an obvious fit for the summer. So why it only hits in the Hot 100 in late October kind of boggles my mind. Anyway, it's very much a Kenny Chesney song in 2020, for better or for worse. The percussion feels a little bit heavy and overstated, especially on the hook, and I'm not wild about all the vocal mixing, specifically the backing vocals. But you know what, for making pretty lightweight cuts about just being happy in a moment despite everything going wrong around you with a little bit more unique detail than the average Nashville guy. This is fine enough. Kenny Chesney, this is in his wheelhouse. It ends a bit abruptly, and again, it's nothing you haven't heard before, and I'm still not quite sure I've forgiven Kenny Chesney for never pushing a single properly for Songs for the Saints, which was his 2018 album that was way better than it had any right to be, but this is inoffensive. It's fine. He's done worse. I'm not going to complain about this, especially compared to number 81, Cancelled by Larray. Because I just gave him fame. Now I'm moving on a sister. I think I'm about to diss her. That ass is looking thicker before her getting bigger. Oh. Okay, let me make this abundantly clear. I've said before that social media drama rarely ever sounds good set to music. Most because it's often small-minded pettiness or demands a level of nuance that most set to talk about it won't bring. So by extension, the whole messy and complicated issue of canceling anybody probably translates even worse. And that's before I tell you that this song is from a TikTok star from the goddamn Hype House. And somehow it actually gets worse from there. The song is basically an extended riff on major YouTube drama from the past year or so, with the mugging jackass delivery of somebody who's likely a half step away from winding up in shit himself before asserting his own vague pretensions towards his own success after he flips the beat into Tay K's The Race, something I didn't like when that song originally came out. Somehow we got internet money to produce this, and I gotta say, the beat still sounds really cheap and clunky. So while it's entirely embarrassing for me that I actually recognize way too much of this stale YouTube drama. I gotta wonder what this adds beyond reheating bad tea with no unique details or jokes, entirely too much gloating, and a bunch of burning bridges with rapping that frankly feels amateurish as all hell. I called this fuckboy rap years ago, and while apparently that label did not catch on, when it comes to this junk, it probably should. But you know what? Wow, we're on that topic. Number 71, Hate the Way by g Easy featuring Black Bear. Too, even after everything we've been through, thought I was the one with all the issues. Okay, help me out here. Why is g Easy still a thing? I want to say that MGK, of all people, finished off his career with that disc fight they had back in 2018, but there was a steep drop-off between the real hits off The Beautiful and Damn, and at least No Limit was kind of good, and how bad his album tanked in June of this year. Did some of you even know that came out? Anyway, this pairs him up with Black Bear for his new album, because if you want to make fuckboy rap, why not go to the source? And congratulations, if you wanted the bitter song airing some lingering drama and feelings between Halsey and G-Eazy, 
this is it. I mean, I do find it amusing that both sides have accused the other of cocaine abuse when it probably was just the both of them all the time. But even though Halsey made a worse song on the subject matter with Without Me, the existence of this slog somehow gives her even more credence. To the point where I might actually be on her side. Let's not mince words. This song would not have charted at all without Black Bear's hook and the washed out dreary guitars behind the trap skitter. Because g Easy's consistent problem since the very beginning, it's back at the forefront. He's miserable, he's brooding, but he's so completely boring about it. You reference Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain in some of the clunkiest phrasing possible on the first verse, and you can't sell any similar drama beyond just moaning about how she's clearly eclipsed you in every single way? Hell, outside of a couple scattered moments, I don't even think Halsey had that good of a past couple of years, and she blows g Easy out of the water, especially as Black Bear remains a non presence on the hook. He had his one good moment with, what do you know, MGK, and now he's back to being crap. I guess the best thing I can say about this is that it's more utterly tedious than in your face bad. But if this is the comeback G's he's got planned, it's a failure to launch. Next. Number 52, Your Mind Still by Young Blur featuring Drake. Me cause you mind still. Oh. And I don't wanna go unless you make me. Okay, can we sample a different Sting song besides River of Dreams? Especially when the last major sample of it in Lucent Dreams is still charting globally right now. Anyway, I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised that Drake is teaming up with Young Bleu, an Alabama trap crooner that I'll admit I previously did not recognize, but it's actually built a pretty impressive following outside of chart success, with this now being his breakthrough. Now, the interesting thing is that Drake actually sings his verse on the song, and again, I I actually don't think he sounds all that out of place here. And even if I think the hi-hat rhythm and the percussion does not quite complement a lot of the groove here, I actually really do like Young Blue's delivery as a little bit more soulful, even within the autotune. He sounds really damn good here. Shame that the content of all of it is even more concern trolling, where even though this girl has plainly moved on for a new guy, they're so thoroughly self-assured they can win this girl back over, and it just feels incredibly manipulative, especially and Drake himself trying to recontextualize a hug that this girl gave him at the club. And there's no real self-awareness either that this is as skeevy as it is, which just sucks away any promise it might have. The one thing I will give it is that Young Blue seems to have some something promising going forward, and the Drake cosign has been known to work, but man, this should be better. Just saying. And finally, number 14, Lonely by Justin Bieber featuring Benny Blanco. Oh, maybe then you'd know me. I would really love to know why people are still infatuated with the non-presence that is Justin Bieber. So much so that after his last album was a boring, crappy slog, we're getting more singles as he tries to push another one. This time with Benny Blanco and the more notable name behind the scenes being Phineas, Billie Eilish's brother, and a producer who could probably make Bieber sound at least somewhat tolerable in comparison with most of his production. And for the most part, he does a pretty okay job for a pretty minimalist song, very spare key keyboard melody. It's clearly designed to center Bieber's angst here as he muses on being famous and loved by everyone, but also having being hated by everyone as just a kid for all of his missteps and bad decisions, and that wears on the consciousness and he feels lonely. And I'll give him this. Being a child star is rough on anybody, especially in teen pop and an exploitative industry. I do have some sympathy for Justin Bieber here. It's hard to be the most hated person in the world, but not much sympathy, and I got two reasons reasons why. The first is that the loneliness that Bieber is trying to emphasize doesn't really feel accurate to reality. He had a lot of mentor figures and his family around him, and a famous girlfriend in Selena Gomez for years that he treated pretty badly, and I'm not so quick to exonerate him for all the crap he's pulled, especially when by the end he came out on top. And he's relatively unapologetic too. This isn't I took a pill in Ibiza or every time Bieber, even when you're lonely, you've still got big name collaborators working with and around you. And the other factor is, well, uh, he hasn't grown or changed that much. And while his vocals here are produced better, they still reflect the same vacant lack of personality that's frankly been an issue for around a decade now. So yeah, you know what? This might work on some of the fans. It's fine enough, but have to save it.
some of us might know a little better. And man, this week sucked. Now, best, honestly, it's a toss-up between Kenny Chesney and T.I. Both songs are decent at best. And while they're both recycling, I do like the hook and groove of Happy Does a bit more overall. So he's going to get the best with honorable mention to pardon with Lil Baby. Worst of the week, on the other hand, is Piss Easy. Canceled by LeRae for being pretty damn unlistenable. With dishonorable mention going to Hate the Way from g Easy and Black Bear. It's kind of impressive to be that boringly unlistenable likable i gotta say it anyway next week we got a bit before ariana grande completely takes over but positions will probably break through in a huge way so stay tuned for that but until then i'm mark you're watching billboard breakdown affiliated with spectrum pulse